June 3rd, 2015, Council of Governments uh, meeting. If we could uh, stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order of business is the consent agenda. Consent agenda items are expected to be routine and non-controversial and will be acted upon by the council at one time without discussion. Any council member, staff member, or interested parties may request that an item be removed from the consent agenda for further discussion. Are there any items on the consent agenda being asked to be pulled? No. I right. did. I wanted to pull the uh, triennial reports. Okay. Item number three. Yes. Are there any other items being asked to be pulled? <clears throat> Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda with the exception of item number three? So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. Moved by. Councilman Kearney, seconded by Councilmember Ponte. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Item number three, Mr. Hamminger. Um, just briefly, I first wanted to, I was very impressed with both audits. So many consultant contracts I end up reviewing are disappointed. It seems like it's a template boilerplate that we've stuffed our names into. But this actually seemed like a pretty comprehensive and I think helpful review. I did want to highlight, I guess, one of the recommendations in the COG report. There's recommendations for both the transit system and then for the COG itself. And I talked to Melissa a little bit about it, and I guess it's going to be more subject to future discussions. Jim, but would you reference the page yeah. that the recommendation is you're discussing? Page I'm on the COG, little one, little one, little one three Roman numeral at the very beginning. <clears throat> okay. And I think I just wanted to mention that first one, recommending analysis to create what they call a CTSA. That's a big deal, I think. And if nothing else, aside from the potential benefits and the relationship impacts, to our fixed route system, once we do have a CTSA, they will be getting some of our, I believe, the TDA money automatically off the top, mm -hmm. which could affect, correct me if I'm wrong, the balance that would go to roads and bridges. So I just wanted to highlight that. Maybe we should look at it. I, I understand nothing's going to happen right away but that this is going to be a follow-up item, and I think it's something for, as a board for us to be very interested in, I guess. I would like Let's to uh, defer to Amber Collins. She was the project manager and oversaw these Yeah, and I think that um, you, know, you have it correct that you know, we're asking you to accept the audits um, now so that we can submit them to Talk next by June 30th, but this can be a future item for discussion. Um, but they're really just recommending us to really look at analysis of the CTSA because um, the COG is required to develop um, claims procedures and valuation criteria of evaluating um, whether or not a CTSA is appropriate for the company and um, developing you know, performance criteria to evaluate a claim under CTSA, uh, Article 4.5 for CTSA. So okay. we'll be talking about this in the future. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Is there any further comment by the board? Any comment by the public? Do we have a motion to approve item number three of the consent agenda? So moved. I'll second. Moved by Councilmember Hemminger, seconded by Councilmember Ponte. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Approve 6-0. Regular agenda. The next item is the 
Public comment. Five minutes per person. Comments shall be limited to items of interest to the public that are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the Council. Is there any public comment here this evening? Item number 10, the report on a closed session. We held a closed session on May 6th, pursuant to government code section 54957.6. No reportable action was taken at that closed session. This was an informational item. Flying through the paperwork here, folks. <coughs> okay. Item number 11. The action item is requested to be approved. This is the fiscal year 2015 16 operations budget. And Ms. Raggio, you have the floor. items listed are the presentation and then to open the public hearing if that is the summary of the presentation uh, we can open the public hearing regarding the fiscal year 1516 operations budget is there any public comment under the open hearing of the operations budget <coughs> okay seeing none we will close the public hearing and is there further discussion by the council on the 1516 operations budget? That was a very small increase. <laughs> Is there a motion to approve the 1516 operations budget? I make a motion to approve. I'll second the motion. Uh, motion to approve by Councilmember Ponte, second by Councilmember Kearney. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. House is 6 0. Item number 12, the fiscal year 1516 overall work program. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, staff recommends the council approve fiscal year 2015-16 overall work program, overall work program agreement, and the planning, uh, programming, and monitoring expenditure plan. Staff also recommends the approval of resolution 1531, authorizing the executive director to execute agreements and related funding documents. The OWP has been reviewed by both the executive management group and the technical advisory group. Um, I tried to um, provide a bigger spreadsheet so we could actually see it. Um, Thank you. The most significant changes uh, to the draft that was approved in March um, on line item or work element 10, the regional transportation update, uh, the total project. Uh, funding program on this project um, was decreased. The majority of the work will be done in the next fiscal year. This will um, kick off the RFP process, the consultant selection, and we'll start that in the fall. Um, another decrease um, was work element 19, the wagon trail project. Um, this project decreased due to project delivery. It's moving right along. This is the project balance. Um, we have the addition of two new grant award, uh, awarded, two grant awards. Um, number 16, the Angels Camp Main Street Plan Grant, and uh, Work Element 17, the 49 Commercial Gateway Corridor. So those were additions to this um, overall work program. Another change in the, uh, from the draft is, that I wanted to um, highlight is the work element number one, the overhead costs. So staff isolated indirect costs in this funding uh, category because it's the only 
funding source that these indirect costs are eligible under. Um, staff is, after the close of the fiscal year, going to submit an ICAP, which is an indirect cost allocation plan. Um, we can receive, a, I hope we receive approval for a flat rate so that we can be reimbursed for some of this overhead or indirect cost on the federal projects for funding that we're administering. Um, let's see. Uh, the final OWP is due to Caltrans um, June 1st. Um, this final does not um, reflect any of our uh, year-end close or carryover balances. That will be reflected in the Amendment 1, which, will usually, which usually comes back to the Council in October. And then that's where we have an accurate um, um, accounting for all of our carryover balances and <coughs> projects. If you have any questions. Council? Any public comment? Do we have a motion to approve the fiscal year 1516 overall work program, work program agreement, planning, programming, and monitoring expenditure plan resolutions 1529, 30, and 31? So moved. Moved by Councilmember Morris. Do we have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Councilmember Kearney. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 6 0. Okay. County report. I believe. <coughs> Deborah, are you coming up for the county I'm report? I'm coming up for the county report. Deborah Mullen <coughs> from Public Works. Okay. Just have one little county item, um, and that is the Arnold Rim Trail project has um, submitted its uh, final report of expenditures. Thank you for your help, Melissa, with that. And on Friday, the uh, Caltrans staff will be conducting its final walkthrough. Excellent. And then we'll be able to close the book and everybody should go for a nice little walk there. Okay, that's all for the county that I have. All right. Knowing do that you have a tendency to, oh, I'm sorry, is there council do comment? Do they physically walk the project? Yes, they're going to be up there. Okay. 10.30 if you'd like to yeah. come up and. On Friday. This is tomorrow? Day after tomorrow. Day Friday. after tomorrow, okay. Any further council comment about the county report? All right. Uh, would you like to jump right in on the transit uh, report? I'm going to stay here for the transit <laughs> report. Thank you. Um, so the, the county fair has come and gone and um, Calaveras Transit provided shuttle service uh, through Angels Camp on the three days of the fair, fr uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and then on Saturday um, a bus that ran from Valley Springs from La Contena Plaza to the fair. Um, altogether it served 490 passengers. And uh, we rode it and had a good time. It really was fun, and I'm hoping that it was the introduction for uh, to transit for a lot of people who haven't yet tried it. Um, the fare booth <coughs> also was really nice, and um, it was a good opportunity to have one-on-one uh, -on -one contact with people as they went by. We would snag them and uh, talk to them about how transit can uh, help them and uh, it was interesting people did uh, were interested had questions about um, their particular case we gave out uh, schedules and people would spin the wheel and win prizes so it was good and it was good because we had some great volunteers uh, supervisor Kearney thank you and supervisor Edson volunteered um, we had volunteers from Public Works Jeff Krovitz, Robert Pappinger, Kelly Zonizer, uh, Tina Sock, and Ellie um, Viglianzoni um, from Paratransit Services. The operations manager, uh, Cynthia Lawrence, volunteered, as did uh, Dave Blank and Sue Barger. So I thank everybody that um, helped out with that because it's, it's pretty rigorous talking to people. Um, 
And then um, moving on, we've uh, started the, the new schedule, new transit schedules take effect um, on the 26th. Um, to my knowledge, it was seamless. I uh, haven't heard any disasters of people missing the bus. I think uh, we made some noise about it and hopefully everybody heard. Um, we started the Burson run and there have been people, actual passengers using that. So we will be tracking that closely to see how viable it is in real life. We had some fun with a first run with Supervisor Itzen and a group from the ARC and from Common Grounds. And, um, it was the first ever Burson party bus. Those, <laughs> those words have never been said together. I'm proud to have said them. Moving on to the, the inner city service, we've been um, moving through the, the planning process for the routes and trying to work with um, San Joaquin Regional Transit District on, uh, they're gonna help us coordinate our uh, stops with, with their buses and their, their stops and connect us to Delta College and we have some work ahead of us to get that all planned out and ready. Um, we're still anticipating receiving the bus um, late July, but I'm not even going to mention that. So, uh, because we, yeah, sometimes we're disappointed about when buses arrive. But we're looking forward to that. Um, if anybody else, any has any questions uh, on transit, world of transit? Deborah, of, of the 490 that rode the bus, any idea how many were perhaps new to riding the bus? No. Okay. I don't have any data on that. Okay. And how about the ones coming through the booth? Any estimate about how many people you may have seen? No, we, no we didn't count okay. people. Okay. But it seems busy. Um, you know, there were some gaps, but for the most part, pretty consistent. There was consistent flow like, of people. Good, good. Yeah. I think and all we, that outreach is good. Yeah, we had a, um, a, a wheel to spin for prizes. That was mm -hmm. the first time, and that is just great for pulling people in and then while they're spinning the wheel they're captive mm -hmm. and you start talking at them <laughs> yeah I think all that outreach is wonderful so in prizes we do need to purchase some more um, goodies we're running out of water bottles and everybody was real into tote bags now that mm -hmm. you need them for grocery shopping mm -hmm. yeah. other council good, comment good I had two questions. Uh, one, the status of the contract with the paratransit negotiations that due to expire on June 30th? Um, the board has extended that a little, um, just a three month extension to give us a little more time to talk, to work with them. So okay. that's, uh, it will now expire September 30th. <coughs> we approved that at our last <coughs> meeting. So okay. there were no questions or. <coughs> Okay. And the status of the purchases of the CIP items for the buses and the minivans? Um, as soon as we hear from PTMI SEA that our allocation's been approved, they tell me that um, it'll be this month. So as soon as we hear that, the, the purchase of two buses has already been approved by the Board of Supervisors. Um, so unless that's expired and I need to check on that, we'll go ahead and immediately order two more buses. Okay. And the minivans? I'm sorry? The smaller vans? The nine passenger oh, vans? The same thing with those and um, we will order those right away. So well, you have we'll have to take those to the board actually. Okay. Instance. So you're waiting for allocation instructions, approval, yeah. and then board yeah. approval, county board approval. Yeah. For right. The for okay. the purchase. Okay. Any further council comment? No. Mr. Andrew. Just one follow-up question on the negotiations with paratransit. Have we yet made a decision about whether we're gonna go out with an RFP or if we're gonna extend the current contract? We have not, although I must say we're leaning towards extending the current. Um, they've done such a great job. Um, so it's a matter of working with the, the costs of it. Okay, because we'll need to make that decision maybe within a month to have adequate time? Quickly, yeah. And we're, we're meeting with the consultant um, on Monday okay. to, to work on that. All 
right, I think we can say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> City report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Dave Hannum, Director of Planning for the City of Angels. Just got a couple items for you tonight. Um, I'm finally finishing up our, ST, our, our STP claim. Hopefully have that to Melissa here pretty quickly. <laughs> She's been bugging me and I need to get that finished. Uh, so hopefully I'll have that to her probably Monday. Uh, we're also working on our, on our request our request for authorization for the new money that we the city received as part of the um, as part of the new OWP pro, or the, the new capital projects. So we're working on that and hopefully have that to Caltrans here uh, in the next week or two. Um, we found out there's new forms that have to be filled out, so we're making sure we're going over all the forms and making sure we have all the new ones, or else they'll just keep kicking it back until until we use their brand new forms. So we're working finishing on that. Um, we have on the Murphy's Grade Road project, we have hired our surveyors and, and they're in the process of surveying all of the all of the area that we're looking at in terms of improvements for the, our Murphy's Grade sidewalk project. Uh, we've also been approached by uh, Bret Hart Union High School District on some property that they're looking to, uh, to buy uh, right outside right outside the city limits. Uh, however, they're looking we're working with them to potentially maybe annex that land and, and kind of expand that project to include some curb gutter sidewalk up there as well, which would allow for students to get back and forth uh, from, their, from the property, from their properties from across the street. Uh, the main intent of the new property, I think, is for their farm animals in their, in their uh, farm. So, so I think that's gonna, that'll be a good thing. Um, we're working with, uh, we're still moving forward with our partnership planning grant. Uh, that, that uh, relationship between the consultants are, is going fairly well, and um, we are keep moving forward with our uh, um, with our with our modeling and making sure that all the everything's in line. So we're moving forward on that project as well. Um, and just for uh, um, just for the council's uh, aware is that we we received uh, today, as a matter of fact, an application from Mark Twain Medical Center. So they are looking to come back into the city uh, at a new location. Uh, which is an old location, but it's a new location. Uh, so we're working. We're working with them. We'll be working with them over the next three or four months through a new entitlement process and get them up and up and running. And we've also met with the project engineer for the Utica Hotel. So the city is as part of. Uh, we've met with them and, and keep putting together a phasing plan and how we're going to approach uh, that the work that needs to be done to the hotel. Uh, we're just in the very infant stages of it, um, and so. But we think that uh, I th we think we have a program that that'll get that thing uh, get that thing going. So, so just uh, just kind of what's going on in the city. Uh, any questions about anything or any comments? Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. So, no? All right. Thank you. Mr. Baker, come on up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and the Council. Uh, I have a few things to bring up. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, first of all, I think uh, Chairman Gomes brought this up last time. The uh, road charge pilot program is going on. Essentially, that's to look at the idea of charging by how much vehicles use the road as opposed to the consumption of fuel. Um, there is a public process. They have a technical advisory committee. You know, I'm providing this to Amber. Um, I don't know if we can get copies to you. Essentially, there's a, a schedule of meetings. And of course, you can Google Caltrans Road Charge Program. Uh, it's actually run by the CTC, but you'll get it um, if you want further information about that. So it's, there's clearly a lot of technical problems. There's a lot of, you know, privacy, public perception, you name it, there's a lot of issues with it, and they're, they're doing their homework on it. So, The next one was, um, we've got a, a memo out on our drought reduction, or water reduction efforts. Uh, from 2013, we reduced our consumption by 32%. Most of that is through irrigation. Uh, we used five billion gallons to irrigate 30,000 acres of roadside. 
which sounds like, gosh, that's a lot of water, and the truth is that's a reduction from 7.4 in 2013. So we're, we're, we exceeded our expectation, and uh, we're going to try to do that again for next year. Um, our target for 2015 is to reduce to 50% of 2013. Um, while we're doing that, we're trying to make sure that we don't lose investments in existing landscaping and, and the functional benefit of all of that. Um, a lot of what we're doing is uh, improving infrastructure, putting in smarter irrigation systems. Uh, along with putting in smarter irrigation systems, we have to do a lot of training on how to use and maintain those, of course. Um, they're looking into using recycled water, and we're also delaying the installation of, of plan planning, I including a lot of places when we put in projects, we have to mitigate by planning things. And I know they've been looking at ways to delay. You know, there's some issues with that because that's mitigation. Uh, but I think they found a way around that. Essentially, the, the governor has uh, worked out a way to you know, issue a CEQA document that says this is an emergency, uh, so we, we won't be doing this planting. We'll catch up on it when we have water to, to irrigate it with. Um, so we're trying. Also, the district, District 10, is doing a ITS operations plan. ITS is Intelligent Transportation Systems. Uh, those are generally things that you're very familiar with, things like ramp meters. Uh, coordinated signals, all the monitoring, you know, when you see those loops in the road and there's no intersection around, what are they doing? Well, they're counting cars and uh, we use all of that monitoring information to, you know, find out what uh, car volumes are. We have them set up that can detect between cars and trucks, things like that. So essentially, we have all those things. They come from projects. We have to do new projects. We have to have some idea of how we want certain facilities to operate and how, what infrastructure is needed to do that. A lot of the emphasis of this will, of course, be down in the valley where we have the, the freeway issues going on. But um, there will be uh, stakeholder outreach. So there will be outreach to the COG and to, to the county and the city to uh, see what the issues are here and make sure they're included in the plan. But, That'll be a little ways off. Uh, the completion of this plan is planned for December 2016. So another thing coming up and uh, another opportunity for partnership. Um, just while I was sitting here, you know, I come with some things so I make sure I have something to talk about. But uh, things also just come up. Um, there's so much going on with the COG now, which are which really go beyond just the basic core competency of, you know, making sure the bills get paid, making sure the plans are out there, and things get done. And I want to acknowledge some of that. Um, the work that's being done on the Angels Partnership Plan has really been quite something, and um, something for all the partners to be proud of. And uh, I think that the COG needs to be acknowledged you know, for its role and uh, being willing to overmatch on that grant to, to get the, the work done because it's going to be important for the city and for the region to solve some of the issues we have there. Um, we had a call in yesterday on the San Andreas cleanup project and uh, Carly asked me to call in and I figured, you know, I'll, I'll be there just in case. and. Carly doesn't need any help. <laughs> she, she was on it, and um, th her her counterparts at the Adopt a Highway program were working well with her. It appears I'm not sure why why I'm calling in, but I'll, I'll continue to be there to help just in case something comes up. But uh, I was very impressed with that. And again, that's that's something the Cog doesn't need to do, but it's something that is very important to your communities. Um, the Adopt the Highway program is available throughout the county and um, certainly an opportunity for people who want to help, you know, make their communities look a little nicer. And uh, I'll be there to help with the cleanup. Uh, I have to keep up with John Gidney, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, a 
again, the, the COG is, is, has, has brought on uh, the active transportation coordinator. And uh, again, something that didn't have to be done, but something that um, was an opportunity and, and well worth doing. Uh, the health walk was done, and um, I actually didn't hear that it was a great success, but it, it has been every year up till now, so I assume it was. Um, and that's just an awesome, awesome thing to, to see having going on. All of these things are opportunities for the COG to do outreach to the community. And very op most of these are things that don't require the public to, you know, answer questions or do anything to contribute to some planning process. Um, if, you, if you go out there and ask people what the COG is and what it does, you'll get some mixed results. Um, so all of these things that the COG does that go out into the community create an opportunity to explain what the COG is and what it does so that when you do need their input to, to understand some planning process or to get their input on a planning process, you're, you're much more likely to get good results. So I think the COG deserves a, a strong pat on the back for that. Council. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Caltrans from the council? Thank you very much. Thank you. Are you still interim? Are you still interim? Officially, yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Unofficially, are we working on a permanent? <laughs> decline, decline. Decline to stay. <laughs> okay, fair, fair enough. <laughs> Staff reports. Ms. Raggio. I don't have anything. Jim? Amber? Carly, that was a nice compliment to your efforts there. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, I want to thank Carl for introducing the next item. Um, there's a, a letter that I, when I was at the April California Council of Governments conference, one of the sessions had to do specifically with the road charge presentation of California looking at how Washington and Oregon are moving towards a vehicle mileage tax and they had a road charge presentation. At the May meeting I asked for the opportunity to present to the council a letter and I apologize I didn't get it done until this morning but I do have it drafted if I could hand this out to the council members. Jim Mattifer was one of the co-presenters of uh, the road charge forum and he is a CTC commissioner. Um, after their presentation, I did have an opportunity to chat with them. Uh, one of the folks that I was sitting with was Debbie Arnold, who's a supervisor of San Luis Obispo District 5. And she and I both were, were listening to the road charge vehicle mileage tax and looking at some of the documentation provided. And the second paragraph in here talks about the official road charge handout from Caltrans, talks about a location device on the vehicles is not required. And what that means is that there are other ways to do this and what they're talking about is utilizing either um, odometers, just flat annual fees, or actually automated reporting of distance only without location, location of the vehicles. And the concern that we had, um, and it was not just Debbie Arnold and myself, but several others who are from the rural areas, is that a vehicle mileage tax that does not take into account where the vehicles are being driven is going to change the um, dynamic for a rural county because we drive more miles to get around. In addition, we drive more miles more efficiently than in the city. And the first kind of lead into that comment had to do with miles per gallon on the EPA city versus highway that you see on new vehicles today. That if you're in the city, there's a reason there's a city EPA standard versus an EPA highway standard. If you live in the country, whether it's rural San Luis Obispo County, Stanislaus County, uh, anywhere north of Sacramento pretty much, you're going to be pretty much driving highway speeds on your highways. We don't have the congestion that you have in the urban areas of San Diego, Los Angeles, and the Bay Area. The current gas tax model did create a location-based fairness in that if you drive your vehicle in an urban environment, by nature of the vehicle being driven in that urban environment, you're going to use more gas per mile, so you're going to pay more per mile in a gas tax. And as I had that discussion with Jim after the presentation, 
I could see the wheels were starting to turn because they weren't talking about that effect of changing the current standard which does use where the vehicle is being operated um, having a weighting to how much tax you're paying as you use your vehicle. And so the second comment I made to him as well is, is that, that you look at a five lane roadway in the Bay Area and a two lane highway up in the county, our roads are much less costly on per lane mile than a, a major highway down 580, 680 or anything uh, down in the Bay Area or if you're down on Highway 5, 405 uh, down in Southern California. And as that cost per lane mile and time spent in the vehicles per lane mile significantly higher in that urban road environment, they buy again, their nature, are paying more per mile in gas tax. As we move away from a gas tax, a vehicle mileage tax should also keep those same factors in play. So what I spoke to him about, and we wrestled with a couple different ideas, but I felt that using the county of origin where their vehicles being registered, as well as the, the vehicles published EPA mileage per, uh, miles per gallon should have a weighting factor on what they're trying to charge on an annual mileage um, being reported to that vehicle on a vehicle, vehicle mileage tax um, uh, transition. So this is a draft of a letter I'd like to send with support of the board. Um, again, I apologize. I, I had intended to have this out to you with the agenda, and so it's a bit much to take in tonight, but I would hope that I can get the full consensus of the board that a vehicle mileage tax should take into account the county of origin where the vehicle is being registered and the EPA miles per gallon uh, as weighting factors when they look at a vehicle mileage tax and not just a flat odometer reading of mileage, miles traveled. Uh, so again, uh, this was passed out just now, but if there are questions I can answer, uh, I'd be happy to. Jim? I like your letter. Thank you. And we'll support it. It does seem to be based on the presumption that revenue derived from this will go to the county will be go to the county where the vehicle is registered. This is probably where I need to chat with Carl a little bit. <laughs> I guess because the way we currently have um, SB 16 which is out there right now which is a, a modification of raising the vehicle mileage tax I'm sorry, raising the gas tax, uh, truck weight fees, um, applying a, uh, a more um, equitable annual fee to electric vehicles which pay no gas tax. And so SB 16 has tried to incorporate under today's scenario what's being used on the roads where and also redirecting uh, truck weight fees which originally were supposed to mitigate the impact of heavy trucks on our highways several years ago was redirected to the general fund. SB 16, I believe, moves that weight fee back to transportation. That SB 16 is expected to raise about $3 billion a year. It's an interim step, but not a recognized final solution. And this vehicle mileage tax is a longer range project being driven by the CTC and Caltrans, and I believe one other entity um, to move forward based on the models that are being currently piloted by this uh, states of Oregon and Washington, that you pay a vehicle registration based on the county you live in today may have some effect, but I wouldn't expect a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, and in all fairness, we have a lot of folks from out of our county that use our roads and vice versa. We use our, we use other county roads as well as we travel throughout the state. So my expectation is this would be funded more towards a, a general transportation funding and then redistributed through as it's done today through Caltrans' shop program or uh, the STIP program um, or what else they do come up with. Uh, hopefully not more than four acronyms, <laughs> four letters in their acronym. Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess it will be also interesting as this moves forward and they get more definitive on proposing the revenue. Because to me this is important, very important. It's very important. It's where we're but moving as to. as important that is where the revenue comes back to us. Right. Even if we do the best allocation, if through some, like you say, it's very hard, people from the Bay Area drive on our roads, if they get all our road money, mm -hmm. is that offset by us driving to Tracy for occasional jobs? So that's just what I'm interested in, in it's, the future. It's, it's an interesting argument or 
point of discussion because you get to today a gas tax does give you somewhat location dependent revenue exactly. because if you're, you're driving in the Bay Area a lot you're gonna be filling up with gas in the Bay Area. If you're driving a lot in LA you're gonna fill up gas down there. If you're driving up here you're gonna fill up up here. If you don't have a location device in your vehicle you lose that nexus. But the concerns are, and as Carl mentioned, the concerns of privacy are very large. Part of the presentation had to do with the fact, however, that you also look at that baby boomers, our generation, um, Gen Xers uh, through uh, late 90s and birth dates, and then you have the millennials, <coughs> the younger folks, the millennials don't have the same expectation of absolute privacy that we grew up with. And and uh, discussed had to do with smartphones, for example. Everybody who carries a smartphone and, and enables the GPS location device in that, you're pretty much tracked wherever you go, and there are capabilities out there to track time of day, GPS location coordinates, where your phone's been. A lot of the new cars, and I believe it was Chevy that came out, or Ford, with a car today that is a hotspot. You can drive around and the car is a hotspot. Well, independently, it also has GPS for navigation. Well, now the car has all the tools and, and technology built within it to provide location-based distance. Now the effort you have to look at is how do you legislatively, legislatively mandate that and still maintain privacy? How can you make it an, an autonomous vehicle without trying to track who's driving it if the concern is privacy? Um, how do you monitor speeding? Because all of a sudden you can start tracking who's speeding anytime, anywhere, and you can do post-analysis and send a bill out. That's a huge concern. Um, so that's what, that's the conversations that are being held today about this. Uh, older vehicles, no, you're not going to have that issue. Um, but the, the vehicle mileage tax, uh, we're certainly watching what Oregon and Washington are doing. And so, again, after I spoke with uh, both Jim at, post, at the post presentation and had some discussions with Debbie Arnold from San Luis Obispo County, um, I felt this letter kind of summarized my thoughts of that day and, and since then. Um, and I would be asking for the council to support my sending this letter to uh, Mr. Mattifer um, and CCing, actually I will probably CC Debbie Arnold at San Luis Obispo County, having spoken with her directly about this as well. I, I listened to a, I'm sorry, did I interrupt? No, go no, ahead. No, I just. I listened uh, to a discussion on uh, this very same thing at another meeting that I went to and they also had a, a I don't want to say it was a discussion, more of a debate whether they would actually do away with the gasoline tax at the same time that they did something like this. Mm -hmm. And this letter doesn't say anything about that either. Was that discussed? Uh, I'm going back now on two months of memory here. Um, right now, they're not looking at eliminating the gas tax because it's still a viable tool to raise funds for vehicles using the road network in certain in regions. But what they are looking at is in recognition of the fact that the gas tax model isn't funding transportation as it used to because of improved efficiencies of cars and the cafeteria standard continues to be increased over time. The uh, number of hybrid and electronic car, electric cars that don't even pay a gas tax or pay a very minimal gas tax when you start talking 50 to 100 mile per gallon hybrid vehicles that are out there today. Um, so I think what's really being pushed with respect to vehicle mileage tax is just basically trying to reweight how do you collect taxes for vehicles that are utilizing the road system in order to maintain and improve the road system. I don't think it's going to, I think if anything it would be a phased recognition that at some point way off in the future, yes, maybe we, we would just be a VMT and eliminate a gas tax. Personally, I don't think the gas tax would ever fully go away. Um, I would think it would be a hybrid model, um, such as Senator Beals uh, today, where he's saying, okay, an annual flat fee of $100 instead of $25 if you have an electric-only vehicle is at least a start towards assigning a road transportation repair from the use of the roads by electric vehicles. And this is just another method that they're looking at to try and make that happen. My concern is that it's fair. Um, I, I drive a lot of miles up here in the county before, and I, I chuckled when I walked in in the lane and wondered how I could get here right at 6.30. Um, I was in Jackson and I had to run to Angels to drop off a prescription before I got here, but I know these roads so well because I drive them so often that at 55, 60 miles an hour, I can time it within about three minutes as long as I don't get stuck behind traffic. And today, was, this evening was actually a very nice drive. Um, 
I wouldn't be able to do that in the Bay Area. I wouldn't be able to do that in LA, and I wouldn't be able to do that in Sacramento or any other urban environment, even in Stockton on High Five Five at 5.30, 6.30 at night. You just don't know what you're going to hit. Up here, fortunately, you can knock on wood. It's going to be pretty much good traffic all the way through. <coughs> I don't have a problem with anything you said. I just think we're at risk of double taxation, and people are not going to go for that very well. I wouldn't either. Pay for tax at the gas mm -hmm. pump, and then you got to pay for it again when you're driving down the road. And I, and I mm -hmm. think, I suppose, in my mind, something needs to be said about that. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with your letter. It's, it addresses our way of life up mm -hmm. here. And this is an initial draft. This this whole road charge project, as I understand it right now, it's, I won't say in its infancy, it's got some traction already, but I don't believe that they're looking at anything as far as uh, proposals to the legislature before 2017. I don't think it's next year. I think it was in the road charge pamphlet that we were given, I think 2017 was the initial moving forward to some more teeth with it. Um, so we're, we're just, this is an initial comment based on the, the conference that we attended, or that I attended with Melissa. Would this be better served as we um, have some of those public meetings that are going to be coming forward with this topic? Or do you think the timing of this here is t to be able to summarize your discussion at this conference and kind of where we're sitting this, right now this letter is in response to a comment I, that jim made to me at the conclusion of our discussion at that conference which was send me an email okay and i felt that rather than just sending a, an individual email having attended the conference i would have a little more weight from it if i presented it to the board and had the board sign off of it and then present it back to them mm -hmm. letting them know that i you know this isn't just my idea this is the calaveras council the government's yeah. uh, endorsed position that we believe that, again, as I said, the Vehicles County and EPA miles per gallon needs to be weighted factors towards a VMT if they implement a VMT. The actual you know, reality of implementing a VMT is off in the future. This is just, a, this is just a, an initial response to Jim uh, Matterfer based on our discussion. I think there's a lot more information we need to know on all this, and I'm not wanting to uh, say that we're going to support this. I don't know if the, this letter doesn't do that, but I feel that we shouldn't be doing any political, whatever you call it nowadays, endorsement. That's what you say, right? Endorsement. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I don't I'm, know not, I'm not in favor of doing that at this time. Jim. I think I agree with Elaine, and I wonder if we could address that concern if the last sentence says that uh, Calvary County Council of Government, should it be imp a VMT if implemented, should be this way? Because we aren't saying a VMT should move forward in this way, but if it does move forward, whether we support it or not, it should <coughs> be based on what you're saying here. Does that address it at all, Lynn? No. I don't know. I hear what Elaine's saying. I, I'm not so much trying to make a statement that we support a VMT with this. What I am trying to say is as you do your analysis of a VMT implementation, and from what we were hearing at the Calcock conference, it's not a matter of if but when. Uh, the gas tax isn't working. And that's why, so hearing what Council Member Kearney said, is it an either or? I don't think it's an either or. I think it's going to be a hybrid solution down the road in lieu of raising the gas tax, which doesn't fairly assess vehicle costs anymore. That's why they're trying to move to a VMT as an alternative and in its place. As they move it, my comment with this letter, and again, just back to the, the presenter, is that you need to take into account where these vehicles are being registered so that you don't unfairly start penalizing those who are in the rural environments versus those who are in the urban environments. And that's my goal, is just to make sure that a rural position is out there that, you know, you need to take into account where we're at and weight it appropriately. Maybe your letter it, says oh. too much, John. No. Okay. It, it, maybe it should have said less. I, you know, I, I was at the, the, uh, at the conference mm -hmm. and 
uh, I just want to draw attention that there are many differences between urban and rural right. transportation. And we, as we develop this, we need to give strong reference to uh, what our transportation in rural areas. And leave it at that because this right here, I can kind of see what you know where the comment is coming from. Uh, and having sat through another one of these myself that you also heard, uh, uh, there's a lot that isn't known, and you're commenting on specific things that maybe don't come. And, and I, I appreciate what you're trying to do, and I support that. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's just like, hey, you know, there, there's a whole different world out there, and it's not all downtown San Francisco. True. You know, it's, uh, it's driving here where we can actually go somewhere in 20 minutes. Uh, but that doesn't mean we should be taxed heavier because of that. Right. Uh, and, I, and maybe if it said less, I, with a... You know, You'd be more comfortable with that. Well, I think so. I mean, it, it's ex trying to explain a lot of things that are very misty right now. And, uh, uh, and I, I think what you're trying to say is, hey, knock it off, guys. There's other people out here. Uh, and in a way, um, if that was the only thing that was said, it probably would have been fine. Uh, okay. Uh, Amanda. Um, yeah. Um, I actually had the opportunity to attend... Um, uh, down at Sacramento at the Capitol, a uh, presentation by the senator who actually wrote the bill. And um, it was really informative, and it was presented by the League of California Cities. And um, I, he, nobody actually brought up the, the comment that you're bringing up of rural areas. And I think maybe where you're coming from, it might be a good opportunity because I know the next year, year and a half, it's the pilot program. And that's what he was explaining. It, it's going into a testing phase. And maybe this is a good opportunity um, to propose it that part of the pilot program, they maybe split it as urban and rural areas to see where, where they can bridge that gap and see so that doesn't happen and maybe write that letter because I think p the pilot program comment closing for public comment is ending either next month or August I can't remember but there's a period where we, you can make comments and propose what you want to see in the pilot program and I you'd ha I'd have to do some more research but um, you can propose what you would like to see, and that might be a good opportunity to say, you know, maybe you should start looking into not only urban, but rural, and maybe have both, to present both data, and maybe present it that way, um, rather than this. I, d I don't know how that kind of balance, you know, we need both data, not just this. Um, but yeah, they, they made the point, you know, it, they're trying to shift from gas taxes. You know, we haven't had transportation tax change since the early 90s, and they need to change it. And so I see where they're coming from, from their standpoint, from the senators. Um, but yeah, it's going to do a big impact for our area. I mean, I travel, you know, pretty far every day for my commute one way. And it, that, that would just hit, I think, all of us as a as a community mm -hmm. so I think changing it to submit it as a public comment somehow as a group maybe you mm -hmm. guys can see it that way before the deadline I don't I can't remember when it is it might work that way it's August 14th okay uh, mm -hmm. um, to, to submit hey look maybe urban and rural area we need both data it doesn't only affect you guys I, I know that's that's just my. I I and then maybe and also send it to him as well, but okay. it might impact more. Councilmember Hemminger. I just, without getting into the details, I think it's important to word it properly or don't take a position. 
but based on RCRC, my work there, these people aren't thinking about us rural counties. Right. They, they don't. And in, so I just think it's important to get something out there now to start them thinking that rural counties are different. Maybe we need two pilot studies, maybe we need different factors, but I would just put something out there. This letter looks fine to me, change it as need be, but just to say rural counties were different, think about it. Mm -hmm. If we can say that, we have to at least say that, I guess. Mr. Mr. Chair? Yes. Can I make a comment? Um, maybe it's not um, continue this item right. and have a chance for Melissa, the executive director, to have some input and then maybe modify it and then come back at the August meeting. Right, in advance of the August 14th deadline. Yeah, the, right. the August meeting is the first Wednesday, so I think, um, I think it's in October. October is the deadline. I'm sorry? You just looked it up online. No, well, it's on the pilot. The, the pilot program. Is on this page in the is agenda? August? The pilot program. It says August. August. Okay. It's August. So if we brought the letter back at our uh, August. August meeting, would that be something hmm. the council would like to entertain? Well, while I was desirous of re responding to, to Mr. Manifer more mm -hmm. recently than that, um, I want. I asked for council consensus on that, and I'm not hearing this evening a consensus on just sending this letter out. The right day, right? Fundamentally, as drafted, maybe with the modification that Jim uh, presented. Keep it. So I will respect the council's, you know, direction that you could use some more time to chew on a letter for a council-approved uh, recommendation, um, and that's what I'm hearing. So if you, if the council would like to continue this or uh, to the August meeting, I'm certainly uh, willing to see that happen. I'd like to see a more succinct statement okay. brought back. Um, when I, uh, I mean, I'm re remembering the meeting I sat through when I went to it. It was with a whole mix of supervisors from all over the state. And, uh, uh, oh, the, the speaker sort of had a little fun with everybody. So who wants to volunteer for the first device to be put on this? And honest to goodness, all the people from, uh, not all of them, but a lot of the supervisors from urban areas were raising, yeah, yeah, me. All the rural counties, like, you know, I don't, not a single one of them raised their hands. In fact, we were looking at each other, go, I don't, I'm going to sell this to my constituency. Uh, so I think you're, I think you're on track. Um, okay. Just maybe hit the ball out of the park a little more succinctly. Okay. I just, yeah, for me, I just, I, I think the concept or the idea of writing a letter in support of whatever it is that we come up with is important. Right. For me, I need a little bit more information. Sure. Um, you know, taking a look at this bill, as Amanda said, the public comment period, um, you know, we could maybe make a more powerful impact mm -hmm. if we could emphasize more the ruleness okay. of our concerns with the proposals. Um, and, you know, I think the idea of Melissa involved and, you know, maybe we even go back to our respective board and councils because I'm not sure you know, for me, how public works <coughs> might weigh in on something like this because of that funding source and, and how the monies might be divvied up if that's in the bill or not or the pilot program or any of that. So I, I would okay. like to see a little bit more information on it okay. to be able to make a perhaps a stronger statement for the rural areas. And if we have some time, and it sounds like we do, I, I'd like to see a stronger letter in that regard. So. Mm -hmm. I agree with the comment, and I think that they should come back to the council in August. Okay. Yeah. Jim. As I mentioned, I'm thinking, that, and maybe we can mention to Melissa, see if our CRC, in addition to whatever we do locally, and mm -hmm. it's important to follow up, I think, personally with your contact, but to see if our CRC is preparing a response, and if not, Tell them they should be. <laughs> okay. well, we, we might find the letter from COG as well as our respective boards in some avenue to to be supportive of a, of a letter. Okay. Might be three different letters going out based on right. how how this might affect our individual entities as well. And not just to Jim, but actually to the CTC under their public comment. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. 
But you did pretty good just starting this letter this morning. Well, no, I've been thinking about it for two oh, months. Okay. <laughs> I just finally got the ability to type it up this morning. Um, Thank you for that effort yeah. there. <laughs> okay, well, that concludes our open session of this meeting this evening. We have a closed session coming up, a conference with the labor negotiator, Chair Gomes and Vice Chair Morris, regarding the executive director position, <coughs> pursuant to government code 54957.6. Uh, so I'd like to, to thank the public and, and staff members who joined us this evening. Uh, the closed session, we will be actually closing the doors. And there is no July meeting. Um, the next meeting will be in August, August 5th. Excuse me, John, John you haven't done board comments. Is that not on the agenda? I thought I asked... Uh, Oh, it's not on here. <laughs> okay. Um, it's not on the agenda. It's on the last page at the top. 6.30. Council report. Yeah. That's the real report I just did. And then Hopefully it would be more about four. Council reports. Oh, it's on their council reports. Okay. <laughs> My folks, <laughs> folks, I want to apologize if you'd like to stay. If there are any council reports, I'd like to hear them now. <laughs> My apologies, folks. Jim? I have no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Ponte? No comment. Mr. Kearney? Ms. Morris? No. Ms. No. Okay. okay, now I'll go to closed session. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, council. <laughs>